bottom of the hour, 6.30 right now, a government shutdown averted. Late night talks keep public offices open and keep millions of workers employed. With a fiscal crisis just minutes away, the president and congressional leaders reached a tentative $38 billion deal. Good morning to you. I'm Chris Burrows. And good morning, Chris, and everyone else. I'm Mary Beth McDade. The government will be up and running this morning, and at least for a few more days. KJLA's Chip Yost is live at the federal building in Westwood with more. Chip. Chris and Mary Beth, to give you an idea of how close this deal was coming or how close this deal came to coming undone, well, it came with just about one hour to spare. It was so close that park rangers around the country were already getting ready to put up closed signs. They were already putting up barricades to national parks. Well, those national parks should be open. The reason this was averted is because this deal was struck just before midnight last night. Republicans and Democrats finally coming together. What Republicans got out of the deal, well, they got a lot more than many expected when this whole thing started. They got about $38 billion worth of cuts in this deal. Democrats, what they got out of it, well, they got the money they wanted for Planned Parenthood. That money will keep going to Planned Parenthood and other Title X programs. Shortly after the deal was struck, President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner went to the cameras. This is what they had to say. In the final hours before our government would have been forced to shut down, leaders in both parties reached an agreement that will allow our small businesses to get the loans they need, our families to get the mortgages they applied for, and hundreds of thousands of Americans to show up at work and take home their paychecks on time, including our brave men and women in uniform. Speaker Boehner also praised the cuts in the deal. These are historic cuts. We're told the largest cuts in federal spending in U.S. history. You're now looking at a live shot of the federal building. One casualty, though, even though this deal was struck just before midnight, it caused a lot of chaos. A lot of people, you may remember, rushed to the federal building trying to get passports in anticipation that the government would shut down next week. Well, it's not shutting down. We know that now. However, because there was this uncertainty, today was supposed to be National Passport Day, where you could go to offices around the country for people that work nine to five Monday through Friday. Do they do this every once in a while? You can go in on a Saturday every once in a while. Well, they canceled National Passport Day because they weren't sure if the government was going to be open. Now, one final comment on this. This is not a done deal yet. They struck the deal so late that they basically had to put together a stopgap measure to keep the government running through next week. It's expected now that the leaders have gotten together and made this deal that they'll vote for final approval sometime next week. But that still has to be hashed out. Some people on both sides already criticizing things they're hearing about the deal, but it's still expected now that the leaders are on board and have come to an agreement that it will pass sometime next week. Reporting live in Westwood, I'm Chip Yost. We'll send it back to you. Chip, you mind if we ask one question? This is kind of a big deal. This uh, yeah. Normally the office, passport office, the federal building is not open on a Saturday. A lot of people were looking forward to that. Is there a sign? Have you seen any people show up expecting it to be open? Or have they? do we know, do they reschedule yeah. it yeah. for any, any day in the right. near future? It, no, I actually went up looking to see if there was a sign because not everybody's going to hear this news and maybe coming anyway. I didn't see any sign on the main public entrance. There was a sign there, you know, with the typical sign that says the passport office and it gave its Monday through Friday hours. Nothing about the National Passport Day. However, it may be that this was at a, there are also post offices and I was looking up, right. they the, have like a, where you can go online and see where the offices are. You can go for National Passport Day. It's not every passport office in the U.S. So I'm not sure if that was one of them. We were looking there. It looked like the post office in Westwood was listed as one, but they took a lot of those links down since it was canceled. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to tell where you're supposed to go, um, at least as of today. So, but there are no signs we saw up there right now, but it is canceled as far as we know. But we are told that national parks, federal museums, those kinds of things, they are supposed to be open today now that this deal has been struck. Oh, thanks, Chip. Yeah, I got to imagine if you're planning a trip, you're a little bit worried. Now right you have now, to pay overseas. the extra for the, the rush process in probably, you know, because you, you may have missed a day or so. Nope. All right, thanks, Chip. Government needs the money, yeah. so. So they say. Yeah. Well, we are learning more about an FBI sting that nabbed two building inspectors allegedly accepting bribes from undercover agents. Investigators say this is the hand of one of those men reaching for a wad of cash. <laughs> Hugo Gonzalez of Eagle Rock and Raul Germain of Altadena work for the city of Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety. They allegedly took dozens of cash bribes in exchange for approving and fast-tracking construction projects.
In some of the cases, as reflected in, in court documentation, the inspectors never even went to the properties. In addition to cash, prosecutors say the inspectors accepted materials and labor for their personal homes. They are each facing federal bribery charges. Three marijuana loads stopped at the U.S.-Mexico border. U.S. Customs officers found almost five tons of marijuana hidden in shipments. So this was creative. Shipments of pebbles, uh, pebbles, peppers, and herbs. They hit him. Look at that. They hit it in a bunch of parsley or cilantro. Wow. Uh, this happened uh, right there at the Tecate and the Ote Mesa cargo ports in Mexico. One shipment showed up on an imaging device similar to an x ray. The other was detected by a customs dog. Uh, together, the marijuana seizures had a street value of $5.7 million. Getting very creative. Just they did. Yes, the other day at the airport, they had some drugs and rope. And peanut butter. Wow. Getting really creative getting it across. Anyhow, a South Florida mother not too happy with her daughter's teacher after the teacher taped the girl's mouth shut with packaging tape. And I uh, told her, well, you know, Jess, since you're the loudest one, come up here. You're either going to have tape on your mouth or get sent to another teacher's classroom. Her mother says she does not condone her daughter's behavior, but she's even more disappointed by the teacher's behavior. The teacher and principal at New Renaissance Middle School were not around for comment, but Leah Friel says that she met with the principal one day after the incident. A school district spokeswoman confirms an investigation is now underway. 636 right now. Take a look at the weather situation and take a look live at Big Bear this morning. You can really see, or downtown Los Angeles. Maybe after this we can bring up the Big Bear one, because look at what the morning looks like in Los Angeles. Sunny, bright, cloud-free, good stuff, just a little cool. And can you see Big Bear? I mean, we're talking right now 10 degrees and some oh, low clouds. Chilly. <laughs> it's a chilly one Yay. out there to be sure. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here for us right now on the weather maps and show you Doppler radar. What we do have, we told you there was a little chance of some rain today. It's very little chance. Just getting a little bit here right now, starting to move on shore in Orange County. You might see a little bit of a quick sprinkle here in Newport. It is all done by 11 o'clock this morning. And again, it's not serious. It's very light stuff. Here we are at 45 in downtown LA. We're at 45 at the airport, 46 in Palm Springs. Not bad in the desert. For the valleys today, waking up in the upper 30s, 60. Just a little bit of morning frost. Again, that uh, frost advisory that we have is done at 9 o'clock this morning. Coastal wise, we're talking 60 for a daytime high with a light breeze. And in the high deserts, we're talking 55 for a high this afternoon. Seven day outlook for the Orange County beaches. Look at this, a little cool down midweek and then a nice warm up as we get into the end. Thursday, Los Angeles, uh, nice until we get into Thursday when we warm up big time. This is good. Mm. And the San Fernando Valley, look at that, 79 on Wednesday, 82 on Thursday. This is some great stuff. A live look at the traffic for you right now. We check it on the weekends for you. Everything moving at the limit, no crashes to report. We are hearing from some very nice viewers of this program, giving us Good. a lot of support. Yeah, we're encouraging you guys. Uh, let us know how you're doing. We have what? We have Facebook, we have Twitter, Everything. we have Skype, and, and do you have a, another... Uh Another Message email, absolutely. Right Take yeah. a look. This is from Shirley Springham. She watches on the satellite from Vancouver, Canada. Nice. Uh, the addition of your early morning weekend news to your programming is a terrific move. It's no wonder KTLA is number one. Looking forward to the weekend. Jason says, my name is Jay. Love the new weekend morning news. Finally have my favorite morning show on the weekend. And Eddie says, welcome. It's great to have the uh, on-air neon from KTLA now lit up on the weekends. <laughs> Eddie and the gang over at the LA Times. Aww, nice stuff. Our, cool. our sisters over there and brothers, we appreciate it, right? They're always so good to us. Very cool. So uh, send us a message if you don't mind. Our email address is weekends at ktla.com. Oh, and we should mention tomorrow. You ever wonder what Sam does on the weekends? Well, bless his heart because he's going to be hanging out with us tomorrow morning. That, that's so kind of him. I mean, he works hard all week long. He does Monday through Friday, the morning mm -hmm. show, and then he has his own special show on the weekends. Sam is a nonstop busy, busy show. Man. It's going to be him and his wife. At least he will be oh, in a bathrobe. And they are going to be at a special <laughs> undisclosed location tomorrow morning. Make sure to watch in the 8 o'clock hour. Special undisclosed location. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, coming up, rain, rain, go away. We've gotten plenty wet this spring, but... Are the storms also radioactive? We're going to be talking with an expert about the nuclear fallout from Japan. That's coming up. Plus, it is the brawl that is shaking baseball. The beatdown in the Dodger parking lot is gaining even more attention now. We are up live with a legal expert on what this could mean and what it could cost the Dodger organization.